holy name. Tell us once to God, amen, sister. I'll be right here. To God be the glory. I don't want no glory. All the glory and honor goes to Jesus Christ. We got to stay humble before God. Look, look what the Bible said, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. I always preach this. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Before you pray, you got to be humble. The reason why God is not answering a lot of our prayers is because you're not humble. You can't come to God stuck up and all arrogant and think you're better than people. I'm not better than nobody. My suit don't make me better than you. The devil can wear a suit. God is judging my heart. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. You got to learn how to stay humble when you dress nice. You know, you know a lot of folk come to church dress nice, which is okay, but they get arrogant. They get so prideful. And when they know they're looking nice and won't praise the Lord because pride will tell them, I'm too pretty to praise the Lord. You say, I'm too handsome to praise the Lord. Pride is telling the folk, oh, I'm too pretty to praise the Lord. Look, listen, I'm going to give God praise. I don't care what suit I wear. You got to be humble. Tell someone, be humble. You got to stay humble. Before you pray, you got to be humble. Then God will answer prayer. If my people which I call by my name shall humble themselves and pray. It didn't say be stuck up. It didn't say be prideful. It didn't say be arrogant. You got to be humble. To me, pastors became too arrogant because they got a house. Nothing wrong with a house, but that house can wash away. You got to stay humble. God's word will live forever, but a house can pass away. A car can break down. Ain't nothing wrong with having a house and a car, but don't worship that stuff. That's material. Shh. Hallelujah. Because the same God who blessed me is the same God who can unbless me. Oh, come on, somebody. The same God who raised me up is the same God who can bring me down. It's like God brought down Lucifer because the Bible said his heart became lifted up with pride. Got to stay humble. That's why Jesus said, and the meek shall inherit the earth. Meek means to be humble. Got to stay humble. Come on. Now go to pray. Pray and obey. Let me break it down. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Don't seek the witch doctor. Don't seek Harry Potter. Don't seek the OG boards. All that stuff is a gateway to demons. Seek God's face. What did Jesus say in the book of... Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the good anointing. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all oh, his righteousness then all these things ah, shall be added unto you put God first put God first the love of money is the root of all evil I know you're asking God for a million dollars but what's going to happen when you get a million dollars are you going to still serve him what's going to happen when God if God was to make you rich Will you forget about God? Oh, come on, come on. A lot of folk forgot what God has brought them from. Seek my face. And the Bible going to say, and turn from your wicked ways. Stop the racism. Stop the crime. Tell yourself, it's time to stop the crime. I want Jesus to be mine. Let's stop the crime. Black on black crime. White on white crime. Indian on Indian. All this crime going on in the world. Turn from the wicked ways. Hallelujah. Then God said, I will come and hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal the land. There's a lot of wicked ways. Gossiping, backbiting people, lying on people, being greedy, being jealous of one another. When you love Jesus, you don't get jealous of each other. But you're happy when God bless somebody else and not be envious. Envy can cause you to go to hell because you have a jealous spirit. That's what the Bible declares in Jeremiah, chapter number 17, verse 9. That the heart is desperately wicked. Ain't that right? Amen, somebody. It's deceitful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and then go on to say, it is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? I, the Lord God, knows the heart. Praise God. Many of you are going through stuff in the workplace with your supervisors. You got folk harassing you, even on your job. The devil got people on assignment on your job to harass you to try to make you lose your job because these are nothing but witches and warlocks in high places because the bible said spiritual wickedness is in the high places and let me tell you why they messing with you because they know you are a child of god 
Have you ever came across people who give you evil looks and they don't even know you because the demons in them can recognize the God in you? Amen. Darkness cannot stand light. Ah, right, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Good and evil does not get along. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's why they're coming against you. But I hear the Lord saying, there's no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Don't worry. Don't worry. God will fight your battles. Woo! God bless you. Whoa, Lordy, Lordy. He prays to God up in the van. Because the devil knows you're trying to make an honest living. The devil already knows you're trying to pay rent and bills and take care of your children. So he's trying to make it hard in the workforce. The boss, the manager, the supervisor. A lot of times they conspirize, especially when they see that you got favor with the people. Especially when they see that people love you. They start getting jealous. They should be happy because you're doing a good work on the job, but instead they want to be dumb and be jealous. That's, that's stupid. Because they're competitive. Now they're afraid that you're going to take their position. Because they see the favor of God upon your life. It's not to get together and have meetings. Like they had a meeting on Daniel. They tried to get rid of him. And they put Daniel in the lion's den. But thank God, God delivered Daniel. Before God delivered Daniel out the lion's den, God delivered him in the lion's den. The Bible said God shut the lion's mouth. Many of you are surrounded by lions in your family coming against you. you surrounded by lions on your job. I hear the Lord said God is going to shut the lion's mouth. Shh. Oh, praise the Lord. I said, God will shut the lion's mouth. He'll close the gossiping mouth. He'll close the backbiting mouth. He'll close those people's mouths who are jealous of you and lying on you and backbiting you. I heard the Lord say, he's going to close their mouth. Tell us when he's going to close their mouth. He's going to close their mouth. He's going to close your enemy mouth. Right. Woo! Hallelujah. I said, God will close your enemy's mouth. Praise God. He know how to do it. Many of you are being harassed on the job. With them supervisors. I've been through it. I had a whole lot of jobs back in New York City. Been working since I was a teen. I remember my second job I had, never forget it. I was 21 years old. And my manager happened to be a Freemason. Had the same last name I had, Adams. Never forget it. And my first day on the job, I was working across the street from the Apollo Theater up in Harlem. And Mark went 25 as a Methodist man. Never forget this. I told this story yesterday when I preached. Now, i never forget it. My manager, on my first day on the job, my manager said to me, I heard you was a minister. He said, I don't believe you can live holy. I said, what? He said, I bet you hitting all them girls in the church. I said, no, I'm not. He said, I bet you you a playboy. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm a virgin trying to live holy. And I was wondering why my manager was putting me down on my first job. I was 21, no, my second job. I was 21 years old, never forget it. He said, I don't believe you can live holy. He said, I don't believe you living right. That sounds just like the devil, don't it? My manager told me this on my first job. I said, why is this man trying to find fault with me on my first day on the job? He said, man, you handsome, man. You good looking, man. I heard you a, a great preacher. He said, I know you're hitting all them girls and fornicating with girls. In the I said, no, I'm not. I'm a virgin. Try to live holy. I can understand why this man was saying this to me. He should be concentrating on my work not concentrating on trying to make me fall to a woman. So I knew this was a devil. Tell my story. I knew this manager was a warlock, a male witch, assigned by the devil. My own manager, supervisor, was a devil worshiper. Here I'm 21 years old, trying to live holy, trying to make an honest living. i never forget, woman of God. My manager started sitting all these women on the job to try to seduce me. One woman came in the bathroom while I was doing maintenance work, cleaning the bathroom, she took her bra off and showed her breast to me in the bathroom. This happened on the job. That's right, never forget, I was 21 years old. And the manager was seeing all these seductive women on the job trying to get me to fall. That was the devil. Trying to set me up and God kept me. God kept me. That's way before I got married to my wife, Michelle. I was 21 years old. Women was touching me on the arm find me on the job trying to seduce me. I couldn't know how to do my work. I, I had to plead the blood. Another young woman came and put roots in front of my office door. And I stepped on the roots. I said, in the name of Jesus, I began to crush the demons of seduction. They were doing the witchcraft on the job, trying to put a spell on me to give me some lust. And the manager 
was the head of this whole thing. Never forget this. I began to plead the blood against those spirits of lust on the job. So here I'm wrestling him, going through stuff on the job, trying to make an honest living as a young man coming up in life. So I know about these jobs. Because the devil got people on the job too, on assignment, especially if you're saved. They don't bother the ones who are not saved. They bother the ones who are saved. But the weapons of our warfare. Say it again. I'm not carnal, but they're mighty. So I say mighty. Whoa, through God. Until they're putting down our strongholds. I had to use my spiritual weapons because it was a spiritual warfare going on on the job. Then, 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 then the big giant security guard got mad at me. He was 300 something pounds, six foot eight. Never forget it. He got jealous because he saw women was liking me on the job, but I didn't come there for women. I came there to do my work. The man wanted to start a fight. I beat this big old giant on the job. You like David. I like David. Never forget it. <laughs> I was 21 years old. Beat the man down in front of everybody. Had a bad temper, but the man started something with me. <laughs> Never forget it. And the same man ran to the manager and told him I picked the fight with him. And he started stuff with me. So I know about the exams. I'm uh, 21 years old, never forget. It. Surrounded by witches and warlocks on the job, in the church, in the family. Because when you got an anointing upon your life, the enemy sends targets against you. He target you. Tell the truth, right? So I had to stand upon God's word. You know what the Lord told me? And it's for you too. He said, goodness. Say it again. And mercy, and mercy follow shall follow you all the days, all the days of your life. Hallelujah. They couldn't touch me. God began to move my enemies. And most of my enemies are not around. <laughs> and some enemies are around. Some enemies, God may make them stay around a little bit so they can watch you get blessed. Because they didn't think you was going to make it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Your enemy didn't think you was going to make it. But what the Lord said, Behold, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. The reason why God did not move some of your enemies yet, because God wanted them to watch you get blessed. They said you was not going to make it. They said you was a nobody. But God said you were somebody. That's what God would do. A lot of my enemies God moved and some God did not move because God wanted them to see me get blessed. They said, I was not going to make it. They watching me make it. They're going to watch you make it. God said, I raise you above your enemies. He said, I make you the head and not the tail. We can live in a holy life. He said, I make you above only and not beneath. Well, I like about that scripture. He said, above only. Woo! He said, I make you the head and not the tail. I know you feel in this state. Is I make you the head and not the tail. I make you above only and not beneath. God will raise you above that player hater. God will raise you above that jealous liar who's lying on you. God will raise you above that person who's trying to bring you down. When you live a holy life, God will fight your battles. You get on God's side. He'll get on your side. And God is so good. God will make your enemy bless you. Woo! I said God will make your enemy bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be afraid of Satan when God gave you power over the devil. Oh, come on, somebody. People give him power, but the devil don't have no power. The devil ain't got no power over a child of God. Let me tell you something. I had some witches years ago had my name on trees. Practicing voodoo on my name. They all dead. It backfired. That's why so many people are dying in time of deaths because they work in witchcraft against a child of God. There ain't no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. Ah, oh, come on. And then God would turn back around and tell me, pray for them. Some of God told me to pray for some of them. That wasn't easy. But, but, but he said, pray for them. So I began to pray for some of my enemies. And God would use them to bless me. <laughs> That's how great God is. But I don't care how. I don't care how. I don't care how powerful the devil may seem. God, yeah, but God is still in control. Oh, let's talk about angels. God got angels. That's more powerful than demons. Woo! You got your war angels around. Got Michael the Prince, Gabriel, 
and, and, that's right. That's right. And Michael got angels in his army. That's right. So we had, we must learn how to summon our angels. Michael the head angel. That's right. We must learn how to summon our angels. We talk about demons, but God got angels. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. God got war angels that's more stronger than demons. Some of your angels. I feel like shopping right now. Whoa, hallelujah. Because they have the power of God. The same way witches and warlocks can sit out, can incantate demons. We can summon angels. David said that the angels are the Lord and camp about those who fear the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, of knowledge. So when you fear God, God got angels all around you. They can't touch you. God got the hags around you. They can't touch you. The presence of the Lord is here. They cannot touch you. Because you got the shield of faith that will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. I'm not talking about the Captain America shield. <laughs> I'm talking about the shield of faith. Faith is a substance of things what? Hope for. And the evidence of things not seen. Because we're serving a God that we cannot see with the natural eye. But he's a spirit. And they that worship God, you're talking right, must worship God in spirit and in truth. Every day we live by faith. For example, when you go to the Chinese store, I like chicken and fried rice, chicken and fried rice, egg for young. <laughs> you don't know what they're putting in that food. So that's why we bless the food. They may have a cat, they might be cooking the cat. <laughs> Every day we live by faith. When you walk down the street and the light says, don't walk. We walking by faith across the street. I don't know that man gonna push the gas. It may be a crazy man that may push the gas and run you over. We, if we can put our faith in people every day, why can't we put our faith in the God who created people? Hello, somebody. That's right. That's right. If you're on the train, the conductor might be drunk. He might crash the train. Flying in the airplane. Flying in the airplane. Amen. So we live by faith every day. Man can fail you, but God, like you said, will never fail you. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. When I've spoken, I will bring in the past. If we could put our faith in the weatherman, that's deep. And God gave the weathermen a gift to know the weather. They like prophets too, but, but in a different way. If we can put our faith in a weatherman, why can't we put our faith in God? Because when the weatherman said it's going to rain, sometimes it don't rain, but a lot of times it do rain. Now, if we can put our faith in the weatherman, God was the one who created the weatherman and the weather woman. Why can we create? Why can we put our faith in the God who created the weather? When God said you're going to be blessed, God going to bless you. Amen. When God said you can make it, you're going to make it. We thank God for the police force who's fighting crime here in New Jersey that God will save them and protect them as they protect us. When God said I'm going to heal you. God gonna heal you. Right. Woo, ain't that right? God bless you. Praise the Lord. They praising God in the police car. When God said, I'm gonna heal you, it's gonna come to pass. He said, your faith has made you whole. Every time Jesus worked a miracle, he didn't need the faith. They had the faith. That's why he said, your faith, so I said, your, your faith, has made you whole. Jesus didn't need no faith. He already had the power. He said, if you have faith as a size of a grain of mustard seed, I say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. And God to obey your word because you have faith. See, so the devil don't want you to have the faith. He's trying to, to, to discourage us. He's trying to make us doubt. That's why Israel never, never made it to the promised land because of unbelief. They lost their faith. Israel had no excuse. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Israel had no excuse. They seen the miracles that God worked through Moses. They seen ten plagues. They seen God divide the Red Sea. So there was no excuse for Israel to have doubt. They seen the power of God. They seen what God can do when he used Moses. Oh my God. Yet they still had unbelief. They never made it to the promised land because of their unbelief. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. The devil trying to make you lose your faith. But tell someone, keep the faith. Keep the faith. How you keep your faith? Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Woo! Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. I feel, tell someone, keep your eyes on Jesus. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I feel the anointing. Woo! Amen, somebody. Hold on to God. I like them old songs. Yeah. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I won't even talk about the churches now. There are a lot of churches who are dead, lukewarm, don't want to praise the Lord. They got so arrogant because of their education. Nothing wrong with having education, but don't let your education stop you from praising the Lord. Hallelujah. God has been too good. We, we're living in days now. They don't even believe in shouting. Thank you. They don't even shout. They can sit there against his dead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Got five, four services. Nobody getting to live. Nobody getting saved. Because what the money? Looking like a peacock. <laughs> Arrogant. Prideful. I have my nice suit. And they got the clergies and <laughs> pride. And they'll sit right there. Yeah, they know their Bible. But I don't understand how they can know their Bible when the Bible says, if these don't praise them. The rocks will cry out. When the Bible says in Psalms, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. David said, I will bless the Lord. And what? At all times. Did it say sometimes? All times. And his praise, hallelujah, shall continually be in my mouth. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the evening. Praise the Lord in the afternoon. There's power in the praise. If you're in the dead church, get out of that dead church. There ain't no spirit in the church. Ain't no Holy Ghost. It's just dead. It might be a Count Dracula's castle. <laughs> you think Count Dracula's going to pop up somewhere <laughs> because the church is so dead. You think Frankenstein's going to pop up <laughs> because it's so dead. <laughs> that ain't God's church. God is fire. God is joy. Yeah. When they see you shouting, they act like something wrong with you. Are you jumping right? Yeah, like something wrong with you. But yet they go into the clubs, shouting for the devil. They in the parties, boom bopping. But when they see a shot of God like us praising God, they're like, "Oh, what's wrong with them?" I'm talking about church people acting this way. They ain't got the real Holy Ghost. Jesus said, if "You're lukewarm. I will spew you out of my mouth." God don't want no lukewarm church. You ever saw folk walking out of church and they act like nothing ever happened? Thank you. They just go in the store, get food, go home and eat. They don't even praise God in the street. They don't even praise God in the supermarket. They just look nice on the outside. And guess there's evil and jealous. So much jealousy in the church. So much envy in the church. That's why the church became so dead. Now you wonder why folk don't want to come to church. It should be hypocrites in the church. I'd rather have a church sometime indoors. Or in the car. Or in the house. Where the spirit of the Lord is. That, that's right, the church right here. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Honey, I'd rather go to a church with just five Holy Ghost filled people than to a, a mega church packed with 5,000 dead folks. Come on, somebody. 5,000 hypocrites where there ain't no spirit in the church. It gets packed, but the Holy Ghost is not even there. Oh, my gosh. Time to get on fire. Tell someone, get on fire. Woo! The Holy Ghost came with fire on the day of Pentecost. Woo! The Holy Ghost came with fire. They spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God had gave their others. It came with fire. It came as a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And suddenly there came a sound. As a mighty rushing wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And it was all filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. And getting the Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. You don't need no crack. Run the way Christ is at and get out the prayer match. He'll set you free from crack and cocaine. When you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer have to be insane. Woo! Now you can say, look where the Lord has brought you from. Whoa! God bless you. There's an anointing upon your life. You were too anointed to be disappointed. Amen. Woo! Go ahead and praise the Lord. <laughs> we have a church out here today. What kind of church is this? A sanctified church. 
What kind of church is this? A Holy Ghost church, time talking church, foot stopping church. The devil cannot stand praise. When you praise the Lord, your Jericho walls is coming down. When you praise the Lord, God will bless you. He'll make a way out of nowhere. He'll make a way through the Red Sea. He'll turn your darkness into day. He'll take what's wrong and make it right. Whoa, God said, so I take the crooked and make it the straight. I bring down the high places. I bring down your enemies. I bring down your plagues. I bring down all those who are jealous of you. Let God arise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Let the Lord. That's right. God is setting the free right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You yes, say, I bring down your high places. I bring down your enemies. He's doing it right now on YouTube. Let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the King of Kings. And he's on your case. God gonna fight your battles. Those folk bother your son on the job. God is on the case. God is on your case in YouTube. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God got your back. And when you're on God's side, He gonna get on your side. God is on the case. That even you get fired off the job, they may be doing you a favor. They doing you a favor because God got something better. And sometimes God may want to make you the boss of your own job. He may want to make you a manager. Have your own business. Ah, my God. Just when they think they're pushing you out, they're really pushing you up. My God. I want to say that again. When they think they're pushing you out, they're pushing you up. God got something better. I say God got something better than when your enemy push you out. They're really pushing you into a blessing. I say they're pushing you into a blessing. They're doing you a favor. God will take what's wrong and make it right. God will take the crooked and make it a straight. God will turn your darkness into day. But don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. So I say shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. If you want God to give you a raise, give God the praise. Oh, I like that. You want God to give you a raise? Give God the praise. If you're just sitting there with your mouth shut and just watching basketball and hockey, but won't give God time, won't get in God's word. When David said, Hide thy word, have I hid in my heart? That's right, that I might not sin against thee. That you cannot expect to grow in God when you're always watching TV, TV, and horror movies. You gotta shut it off. You gotta shut it off. Thank you. That's thank you. It brings spirits, right? It brings demons in the horror movies. Thank you, attach your mind, cause you to have nightmares. Throw away the horror movies and pick up the word of God. Man shall not live. But by what? Every word that proceeds out of the 